Tonight we're going to take three guys, three girls and rather a lot of alcohol and we'll see not just what happens when they mix as why things happen and what goes on inside the body when they do. Ninety percent of people in the UK enjoy a drink. Not everyone drinks heavily, but however you look at it, it's part of modern life. But while we're all familiar with alcohol, what surprises me in my work in addiction is just how little people understand about what really happens to them when they have a glass of wine or beer, and given the dangers of excessive drinking, why alcohol is so appealing. Our first group of guinea pigs are musicians. Michael, Nick and Grant are in their late 20s and like most of us, they enjoy a drink. For me, <laughs> for me, right, the first drink, it's like, it's like a radio that's ever so slightly out of tune. The radio is ever so slightly out of tune and that first beer, for me, it just brings it into focus. I've never played a gig sober. We always sound better after a couple of beers because everyone just immediately relaxes. What we've done before is sort of play for a couple of hours, then we have a beer, have a break, and then everyone's really relaxed and it plays better. I've got to sing, so I don't want to lose control of that particularly. Bath, which is an entirely different story, of course. <laughs> Celebrate or commiserate, you know, delete is applicable, we'll see. I'd love a glass of wine now. Yeah, I, I'd really like to... I'd give my right one for a glass of wine. I'd really like to be able to have a glass of wine. The guys aren't drinking because for the sake of modern science, they've agreed to give hormone samples before, during and after a night on the tiles. And they have to be sober for the first sample. <coughs> As the evening goes on, we aim to discover the surprising way that male testosterone levels change and how that affects men's bodies. That was deeply, deeply unpleasant. And we're better to see how alcohol can influence the way we behave than on a blind date. What's the difference between a dog and a fox? Don't know. Ten pints of lager. <laughs> to the tonic, please. <laughs> I'm Anne-Marie, I'm 29 years old come from Huddersfield and run a yacht charter company. I'm Helen, I'm 26, I'm from Hull. Um, I'm crew on a luxury yacht. Um, my likes are socialising, um, drinking. <laughs> my name's Rachel, I'm 30 from Huddersfield. I go, oh, I'll, say, I'll say I'm a photographer. <laughs> <laughs> The girls have also agreed to have their hormones measured, but it's not levels of oestrogen, the female sex hormone, that change when they go drinking. It's testosterone that will affect their behaviour the most. I think my favourite drink is, an, is, a, is a really cold glass of white wine. Gin and tonic at the moment, yeah. Used to always be vodka, soda and lime, but now gin and tonic's my new one. I do like um, a nice single malt to help me to sleep. My favourite is tequila. But I'm not talking about slammers. What I like is to take a glass of something a bit special, have a sip, and it's just beautiful. But whatever magical effect you think your favourite drink has, in fact, it's really down to how much gets into your bloodstream how fast. And that depends on many things. Food is key. If you drink on an empty stomach, you get pissed quickly, whereas food slows the process down, but that's not because it's lining your stomach. It's all down to a valve, the pyloric valve, that lets food and drink pass from the stomach to the small intestine, where they're mostly digested. 
While the valve is closed and the alcohol is trapped in the stomach, not much gets through. It's only when the food moves on and the valve opens again that the alcohol enters the small intestine and is absorbed itself. And other things affect this valve as well. For many people, the strongest drinks, 40% spirits like tequila here and scotch, irritate the pyloric valve. And this has the effect of clamping it shut, holding alcohol in the stomach and delaying its effects for quite a while. The pyloric valve might even explain why the alcohol in fizzy drinks acts so quickly. It's thought that the gas increases the pressure in the stomach, forces the valve wide open and lets the alcohol straight through. Tonight I'm going to be working through as many of these as I can and try and demonstrate the specific effects that alcohol can have on all of us. Because however individual we think we are, the effects of drink are pretty much universal. Usually what happens when I drink is first four pints, excellent. Having a whale of a time, I can be really, really funny, really, really funny and, and, and have a laugh and be flirty and charming and everyone's favorite friend and then turn into a complete git and be horrible and nasty and say things that are coming out of my mouth and I don't even know why I'm saying I don't know my limit, do no. I? If I'm out with girlfriends, we're enjoying ourselves, we're chatting, I'll just carry on and on drinking and not, I will not at any stage think, actually I'm quite drunk now, I don't need to drink anymore, I should just stay at this level. It's eight o'clock and time for the evening to begin. The guys are still sober and more than a little tense. I'm more nervous now than I was before the gig. Uh, I'm not. How are you feeling? Are you, you nervous? What are you nervous about? I'm well, nervous about being a <laughs> Basically. Right, shall we going? Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Uh, have, a seat. Right. have a seat. Have a seat. Oh, thank you. Have you come far? <laughs> 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 I'm bad enough for this sort of thing at the best of times. So just... Facing an awkward situation like a blind date, most of us might have a drink to ease the tension. Right, I'm going to go to the bar. Yeah, we'll get a drink. What are you having? Are you coming with it? Lager, lager, gin and tonic. It loosens you up, it gets you ready for the night, your, your inhibitions come down a bit and you just, you just feel good and you're ready to have a good time and that's what it's all about. Okay. There's more than one reason why the first drink feels so good. The first thing alcohol does is to increase levels of dopamine, the chief neurotransmitter that makes us feel pleasure. And at the same time, it's working on a second neurotransmitter called GABA, whose normal job is to slow nerve activity down. Alcohol enhances the action of GABA and slows things down even further. But different parts of the brain are affected by different amounts of booze. The first bit to go is the frontal lobe. This is the brain's executive center and it's where we keep our conscience and our self-control. And when we drink, brain activity in the frontal lobe is reduced almost immediately. And before long, we're losing our inhibitions, and our behavior becomes more impulsive and emotional. Slowly but surely, we get ever more immature because as we drink, the different parts of the brain are affected in the reverse order to which they developed as we grew up, with the result that a night on the tiles becomes a stagger back to childhood. Excellent. <laughs> What's it like living there? It's lovely, actually. Yeah. Normally, it takes about 10 minutes for alcohol to start working on your brain and weakening the power of the frontal lobe. And already this evening, the loss of inhibition is starting to show. So I probably sit back and think, oh, I don't need to say that. It's not necessary. They're all talking. And whereas drunk, I'd you know, want to shout it and, you know, ah, listen to me. I've got this to say. I'll be more inclined to flirt with somebody if I've had a few, definitely. So I don't, more often than not, don't have the confidence to go up to somebody sober. 
The flirting will get more intense once alcohol begins to affect the hormones. But for now, other changes are more obvious, like coordination. After about five drinks, alcohol starts to slow down nerve activity in the cerebellum, the bit of the brain that looks after your dexterity. Oh. <laughs> Is this going to work? But how soon any part of the brain is affected depends on whether you're male or female. And the reason for that goes beyond the fact that women are generally smaller. To help explain what's going on, I've been matched with Gemma. Gemma and I have a lot in common. We're more or less the same height, we're the same weight, and we share a passion for tequila. And she's been matching me shot for shot all evening. Now we're putting our hand-eye coordination to the test. You need, you, need, you need the skills that come with a few tequilas to get this game absolutely tamed. Oh, you're still oh, a just, ahead I know, of don't, me. Don't, Hang on, don't fret, but Hang you're going to lose. I promise you. Women feel the effects of alcohol faster than men for two reasons. First, men carry more of an enzyme which destroys alcohol in the stomach so less of the alcohol I drink actually gets into my bloodstream. Another crucial difference between us is fat. As a reasonably fit male, about 20% of my body is fat, whereas Gemma is carrying about 30%. Hmm. This difference in fat is important because alcohol will infiltrate every part of the body that has water in it, which means every part of the body but the fat. So even though we're the same weight, more of my body is able to dilute the booze, with the result that my brain and body are less affected than Gemma's. Why isn't that coming out? <gasps> but the best test is the breathalyzer. The legal limit for driving is 0.35 milligrams per litre of breath. Sample taken. Oh, 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 point two, point two, eight, eight, oh, point no, two, nine, nine, point two, nine, okay. So technically, I'm still legal to drive. Okay, okay so let's test, you. let's okay. test you. Okay, I was okay. point two, nine, let's okay. see what, let's see what you are. Oh my god. Point four, oh four, my four, god. four, four, five. Oh. Point four, six. Point four, six. Point four, six. So that's a fantastic difference, that's isn't it? Nearly, oh, it's nearly. Like it's a huge. <laughs> whatever it is, it's, it's much kinda. more. It's gone midnight, and after three pints, three shots, and a couple of glasses of champagne, the alcohol has definitely started work on the hormones. I seem to f my, I think my motor neuron skills have uh, finally peaked. <laughs> What's curious is that the effects show up first in the women. We know now when I'm getting drunk, because all of a sudden I start wiggling my hips <laughs> and thinking I'm some dancing diva and I'm just <laughs> dreadful, I'm sure. Testosterone regulates sex drive and aggression in both men and women. So the first surprise is that despite the changes in men's behavior, alcohol is only having a small effect on their testosterone levels. If anything, they're experiencing a slight drop. After just two or three drinks though, female testosterone levels start soaring. And by this time in the evening, they've not just doubled or tripled, they've gone up four or five times. So not only do the women feel hornier, they're much more likely to let it show. Men always have this much testosterone in their systems, even when they're sober. 
It's just that they've learned to keep their urges largely under control.